This episode is long overdue. I've been wanting to do an episode about rental vehicles. The do's, the don'ts, the experience we've picked up, the mistakes we've made in the past by not having the resource that I'm going to give you guys today. So watch this all the way to the end because a bad rental vehicle or a bad experience can really destroy your trip. All your hard earned money, putting it into traveling to a new country, going to explore and you spend more time on the side of the road or you don't have a fridge if you watched our Uganda episode. That took away two days of our trip and uh, there is no other resource out there that I could find where people have given the advice on experience on getting out there and renting vehicles in different countries. So I couldn't see a better place to film this than here at Freedom Overland. As you know, with Andrew, he used the entire fleet um, in the seven day trip that he was here. My life in Africa, Roland, we used one of the Land Rovers. Um, I think we did a seven or eight day trip through the Oman coast. And each of those vehicles are different and each trip is different. So let's run through a couple of the points that you should look at and look out for before renting a vehicle. How beautiful is this? This is inside the 79 series. These guys here at Freedom Overland do an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous finish. Um, it's not for me personally, but it depends on what vehicle you're going to be utilizing for which trip. So, there we go. Jordi, please put this over here. We're going to run through. We're going to run through budget. We're going to run through functionality. We're going to run through amenities. We're going to be running through how long are you renting the vehicle? And that goes back to the budget because cost renting a vehicle for two months, it might be cheaper to ship your own vehicle. Service, extremely important. What support are you going to be getting out of that rental company? And lastly, terrain. Um, but I suppose that ties into, we'll put that under, where are you going? Right, before we kick this off, what am I basing this on? So we have rented a number of vehicles and if you go back to our shows, I'll put the links in the description over here. The first time we did a rental vehicle was a 79 series. We were traveling from Gauteng in South Africa all the way, it was called Bush to Beach. So through the national parks in South Africa, a couple of private game reserves, all the way to Mozambique, to Inyamban, to the coast, and then followed the coast back down to Maputo and back to South Africa. So we needed a very capable vehicle. The roads in, in Mozambique are, well, it depends on the rain. It could be absolutely horrendous or it could be a normal dirt road corrugation. However, we were three people up, so I needed additional accommodation. We needed bigger size um, fridges. The other vehicles we're basing this on is, I did another South Africa trip um, exploring Pumalanga. Again, in a 79 series, a different setup once again, because I was traveling solo. Um, we did a trip, I did another solo trip in a Defender 110 in the Pilansburg, only going to a game reserve and filming, filming in a game reserve. Pretty uncomfortable talking to you like this, so uh, that's better. I feel a lot more comfortable right now. I've got a car that we can go camping with, with the gear. The monkey suit doesn't work for me that much. Um, we've done, I've done two Uganda trips, one in a 76 with Ant and one in a 105 series solo trip where I filmed the entire trip on my iPhone. We have done a month trip where we had a vehicle, fully equipped camera vehicle, mind you not, equipped with everything um, from Tech Pro Safaris through Namibia, Botswana, Zimbabwe, 32 days. Um, We've also obviously been looking after the rental vehicles and ensuring when Andrew gets down into the United Arab Emirates or Oman, that we've got a vehicle set up for him, whether it be a rental vehicle, or whether it be a vehicle that comes from one of the many uh, 4x4 outfitters in the country that it's set up purpose built for Andrew. Um, like I mentioned earlier, Roland came down and we had a vehicle for him for seven or 10 days. I cannot really remember that. 
but they are all linked over there so you can go and have a look at our experiences over there but I will put this in a nutshell right the first point let's go with budget because budget really is going to go through every single point over here but budget will depend entirely on what you've saved obviously and how long you're going to be renting the vehicle for there is a fine line between renting a vehicle for X number of days depending where you are in in the Uganda we were picking up vehicles anything from $75 to $110 a day in Namibia the rental vehicles go up to $450 a day um, so that would really depend on how long you're going to be staying if you're going to Namibia and you're only going for five days yes you're gonna go and not spend so much money you know it's gonna cost you two and a half or two thousand two hundred dollars uh, whereas you can go for 22 days in Uganda so You've got to tie up, does it make sense for me to ship my own vehicle and then spend 60 days or 90 days in my own vehicle? Because it will not be cost efficient if you're renting a vehicle. Now, cost, like I said, or budget is going to come into play with each one of these points. Functionality. All right. Functionality ties into where am I going? What is the capabilities I need from the vehicle? Where am I going to be camping? Am I wild camping or am I going to be camping through Botswana, for example, where 80% of the camp, er, campsites in Botswana have got facilities? So you're not really worried about the capacity of the water. You're not really worried about hot water. You're not really worried about solar because when you get to the campsites, you're going to be able to plug in and charge your batteries. So. It really depends on where you're going. So where are we going? Do I need to have water or do I need to store the water for long periods of time? So I'll use Botswana again as an example. If we're going into the Central Kalahari Game Reserve, there are, well, there's absolutely nothing. You need to take everything with you. Your wood, your water, your battery power has got to be strong. You've got to have solar and you should have a fridge that's large enough to be able to cater for the number of days that you're not going to be able to refill. Um, in areas like Uganda, where the cities are far apart and you're not always guaranteed to get fresh produce, you're not guaranteed to get meat products, um, you need to fill up either in Kampala or Ginger. And uh, well, if you're going for a seven, tri seven day trip, you need a fridge that's large enough. So the 76 series that Ant and I had in Uganda, had a 40 liter fridge um, adequate for us for the four days that we were in the vehicle however if we had gone for 10 days we would have requested a 60 liter fridge or something larger to be able to cater for the drinks the food and everything like that now with most rental companies when you start adding a fridge or you start adding a bigger fridge the cost exponentially goes up you've got satellite phones you've got solar panel you've got awnings you've got rooftop tent so a lot of the sites that you go to you'll see um, a rental vehicle 4x4 rental vehicle starting from $60 a day however add the rooftop tent add the fridge and quickly you ramp up to $120 $150 a day so have a look at the company that you're dealing with have a look at where you're going and what what are the guys in I Overland saying about where you're going to be camping? What is available? And then make your decision accordingly. Let's talk about support. Um, it is imperative that when you're dealing with a rental company that you ask them the question, what if? Because these vehicles, as most re rental vehicles, do get abused. And or the person that's utilizing the vehicle doesn't understand what four-wheel drive is, doesn't know how to drive off-road, and then you have people burning out clutches or not engaging it into the right gear at the right time and the vehicle takes abuse. Now, you might be a top-notch off-roader and you get into a vehicle, off you go, you treat it as if it's your own baby and 400 kilometers into the track, the clutch goes. What is the rental company going to do to assist you? Where do they have their points of call? Now, I'll use Tech Pro Safaris for an example over here. Tech Pro Safaris have offices all over the Southern African region. So, we had a battery issue when we got into Botswana. 
very simple go into my own and we had a new battery and they even refilled our gas for us but we had the peace of mind that between from Namibia into Botswana into South Africa into Zimbabwe there are people that are part of the organization that are there to assist if anything goes wrong God forbid if you have an accident with a vehicle how long will it take them to bring you a replacement vehicle these are the questions you need to ask tires are there sufficient tires on the vehicle if there's only one spare and you're going into uh, off the beaten track completely off the beaten track chances of you losing tires are pretty damn good um, uh, we've got a friend of ours that used one of the tech pro safari vehicles got into the Miremi and he lost two vehicles and one river crossing now I know that he's a capable off-roader wasn't his fault but now he's down to no spare tires in the middle of the Miremi in the Delta what do you do there's no coverage did he take a satellite phone did he ask opt for an additional satellite phone or how do you get hold of the support company how long will it take them to get there now most support companies say within 12 hours and you can test them on that because where is the closest location if someone is going to be trying to service you from Johannesburg into Namibia it's going to take them 24 hours plus to get to you and uh, well that gives me another point did you take a GPS with you or did you rent a GPS are you able to give them the location where you are stuck so these are things that you've got to think of if you've got your own overland vehicle go through your overland vehicle have a look at what you take for granted because you've spent so much time building it yourself you expect that same thought process to be in a rental vehicle let's go the opposite side right now the rental vehicle that we had in Uganda uh, inexpensive only four days and at the back of the 76 couple of boxes one box kitchen gear rudimentary pot pan uh, some cutlery and uh, just a gas bottle with a screw on gas cooker lid onto that absolutely basic basic rooftop tent perfect for that trip we didn't need to have everything tucked away it was filming animals and enjoying our experience spending the night in the rooftop tent making a brekkie somewhere on the road and that's all we needed our Botswana trip completely different we're living in a vehicle for 32 days we needed everything stacked away absolutely perfect that is one of the best rental vehicles that we have ever ever used um, in the description below you will see our um, uh, the customized show where we do a rundown on the, the truck called Livingston that we used over there absolutely gorgeous but that's what you pay for it was four times as expensive as most other rental vehicles or rental companies but we could live in that vehicle as if it was our own as if we'd taken our 76 and shipped it and it was borderline on shipping the vehicle we just got out of COVID if it was prior to COVID it would have cheaper it would have been cheaper to ship the 76 down to Namibia and start our trip for the 32 days after COVID shipping prices have gone through the roof so more and more people are looking to go to rental vehicle companies because the shipping prices are eh, if there's no containers then the oil price is up and all kinds of variables that push that through the roof now let's go back to another example on what you need and where you're going um, I used the 110 um, in South Africa to go to the Pilansburg we spent four days in the Pilansburg I wanted to get up really early I wanted to go and film the animals and I chose for a ground tent made a lot of sense I would never have taken a ground tent for the 30 days that I was running around Namibia and Botswana but for the four days getting up nice and early leave my tent zip it up start the car and I'm first at the gate and exploring the nature reserve and then get back switch off the car and off I go basic simple stupid all I needed was an off-road vehicle with a fridge and a tent Mozambique completely different we were three people two rooftop tents at the top a 60 liter fridge very important and an adequate battery system to be able to run the three of us living out of the vehicle our biggest issue with filming these things 
is that most of these rental companies don't think about enough USB ports. If you have three people in the vehicle, two USB ports, someone's always going to run, well, the battery's always going to run flat on one of the phones. And everybody's always fighting for the two USB ports, and invariably, one of them can't go out, and now you're left with one USB port. So those are important things that we've never thought of. Right, so amenities, the last point. And I've touched on this already. Look at this vehicle, got an aircon. Well, if you're coming down to the United Arab Emirates and you're going to be arriving in July, August, September, or any time between, between March and November, and you're gonna be trying to camp over here, this is probably the most important kit that you need, is an aircon. So uh, amenities, what is it that you need? We're filming, so for us, power is a very important. Um, if you're a family, you're gonna need additional water. So have a look at the amenities available in the vehicle and what they can offer you on top of that. And ask them that you need something special. They might assist you. Most of them will. It obviously comes at an additional cost. But I think if what it all boils down to, that every place that you're going to be going to, that you're going to be touring, will require different setup of the vehicle. So you cannot go and cookie cut these vehicles and expect them all to work in all different terrains. Um, I see a lot of the vehicles in Southern Africa that are through the likes of Avis and, and these big rental companies and they're all cookie cut. And um, the suspension on those vehicles, we traveling through Namibia and Botswana and you see these Toyota Hiluxes with a stock standard suspension. No wonder the people are rolling these vehicles because on a corrugated road for two hours, at 60 k's power, with that shock absorber going up and down, up and down, they overheat and become like nothing. The first bend that you get to, you are going to put that vehicle on its lid. Even the vehicle that we utilized that had a good aftermarket suspension, the roads in Botswana, I could feel the vehicle becoming a little bit like a wishy-washy Ford Fairlane where you go over a bounce and bounce and bounce and bounce. And we actually stopped the vehicle, got a hold of Roland, stopped the vehicle, let, them, let the shocks cool down and then carried on again. Now, uh, that is, comes with experience, but a lot of the people are doing this for the first time as an adventure and you don't know what you're looking for. So, does it have aftermarket uh, suspension? Find out, are the tires good enough? Are they off-road tires? Does the amenity suit the vehicle purpose? Does it have chairs? You can arrive at campsite or you fly in and you don't have a sleeping bag, you don't have a pillow, That'll spoil your trip. If you don't have a chair, you think about it, ah, I'm going to be around the campfire, I'll be fine, I'll sit on a rock. Try that for 10 days, not going to be fun, right? So simple things that you would take a campsite, take a photo of a campsite, just go on a Google and look what people have. They've got a fire, they've got chairs, probably got a drink in their hand, probably got food, most people need food. And when you go to bed, you know, does it have a mattress <laughs> it probably would have but you know does it have the, the creature comforts that you need um, I'm stating the obvious yeah but we have gone out and we have kicked off down the road and oh gee did you see any chairs and and no and I quickly make a call go back and they forgotten to put the chairs in or we didn't specify that we need chairs so it's it is actually simple basic but a lot of people do this for the first time and more than welcome to comment below we're happy to help out send a comment below send us a message email us we'll send you some information but i hope this helped you out because we we have been out there and we've had had fridges that conked out and the guys from self-drive uganda were fantastic they they got a new fridge stuck it onto the next bus that left yes it was six hours later or seven hours later we drove out to the bus stop and there was a guy jumping off the bus stop with the fridge passed on the fridge I quickly plumbed it in and off we went um, that was really good service it's not their fault that the fridge conked out the compressor can go at any given time but they had backup to get us up and running and the last thing you want to do is sit oh I haven't even mentioned papers crossing border but most of these companies are pretty pretty sharp if they have got cross-border vehicles they will have all the paperwork and they will run you through that have a look at Tech Pro Safaris. I, I, I'm not sponsored by them, please, by all means. We have used their vehicle. 
But what they have on their site, before you can even rent the vehicle, they have training videos that you have to complete. You have to watch those training videos prior to getting the keys to your car. And you will sign off that you have watched the training videos and that you do know how to deflate and inflate tires and that you do know how to drive a vehicle off-road and you do know how to put it in four-wheel drive or when you leave the tarmac that it goes into four high immediately. This is training videos that every rental company should be putting out there because they're invariably putting your lives at risk if you don't know what you're doing and it is the first time that you're going into the bush and you're traveling way too fast and animals come running across the road and you put the vehicle on its lid. So if you're renting a vehicle, if you can't get hold of us, go onto Tech Pro Safari's site, go and have a look at the information that they've got gathered over there and then base your trip on that. But don't let it stop you traveling. We, we've rented many vehicles and we've enjoyed renting many vehicles, but we've got to a point now where we're building our own vehicle for Africa, dedicated for Africa, because each vehicle we have rented has lacked just that little bit that I would have changed. But it's not my vehicle. It's a rental. And my wife keeps on telling me that. And I can't complain about it because we've had a lot of fun in our rental vehicles. That love relationship that you get with that car by the time you leave, you just want to find money and buy it. And if you get that experience, you've had a great rental company. So I hope you like this. Keep watching the show and uh, check the links below for every one of those trips and the perils that we've had with those rental vehicles along the way. Thanks for watching. If it's dusty, drive it.